peace and blessings. He open his Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and those who follow in his footsteps till the last day. Uh, last time we talked about the Nahi and we go over the uh, aspects of Nahi in general. Uh, yes. And we said that uh, Nahi, yes, is a good thing to, to mention again that the uh, when he mentioned about the categorizing, uh, yes, categorizing Nahi, and he mentioned here, yes, situations of Nahi. Good. Uh, he said that Nahi has four situations, okay. And he mentioned the nahi of a single act, and this is the most, uh, the most, you know, prevalent, the most known. The prohibition of committing, you know, adultery. He gave as an example, and to do two things together uh, is prohibited, but the person can do anyone he, if he wishes. For example, marrying two sisters at the same time. To, to you know, blood sisters, or a woman and her paternal aunt or maternal aunt. Uh, the nahi here is, you know, to do both. Okay, uh, so doing both is, uh, uh, is forbidden. Why? Because it uh, it is most likely that it will severe the ties, you know, between the uh, those the relatives. It will cause enmity and discord amongst the, you know, the, uh, amongst the uh, families. And Islam, you know, looks at uh, keeping the ties as the, you know, the, the, one of the essential matters, you know, in the, for the deen. So anything, you know, why he mentions this uh, in the Nahi, to look into if we find a similar thing that, um, that might cause enmity uh, by, by deduction or by analogical deduction, what's called Qiyas, we might enroll that as part, you know, of that. For example, uh, marrying two sisters, one tajma'u bayna al illa ma qad salaf. So uh, having two sisters, the same applies if, you know, a person marries, you know, the, the, uh, the paternal aunt, the maternal aunt, or, you know, the, their uh, sisters, uh, sorry, their, you know, daughters, you know, the paternal aunt, daughter, the maternal aunt, daughter, and so on, okay? He said to do something separately is prohibited, but to do them together is not prohibited. And he gave an example of wearing one side shoe and not the other. Both have to be worn together or go barefooted. You know, this is the, the nahi that uh, has been mentioned, not to walk, you know, in one shoe, one sandal, you know, to take to... Why? And they, they said the shaitan does that. Another thing also, the ulama, they said, there is a wisdom behind that, that a person should deal fairly with even his own limbs. So not to keep, you know, a foot without protection and protect one foot. But he said the prohibition is either together or separately, for example, and again, you know, you know, and uh, do not, do, you know, do not obey, you know, or give pay heed you know, in obedience to the sinner or the ungrateful among them. So whether that person is a sinner only or ungrateful or together being sinner and ungrateful, okay, then, you know, this is, it enrolls the meaning of prohibition. Uh, prohibition necessitates 
invalidation of the prohibited. And uh, usually when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibits something, he usually closes the doors leading to it, okay? So what's forbidden and is never sought to be done, like the zina, okay? Uh, he said the thing prohibited is in two categories. Forbidden and, you know, completely. Wala taqrabu zina. And subhanallah here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on not only prohibited the thing, but he prohibited even, you know, coming near or approaching it. So anything that leads to zina is prohibited. وَعَبِدُ اللَّهُ وَلَا شُوكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا Okay. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, serve Allah or worship him and join not in partners along with him. So this is what's prohibited in itself. In other words, it is bad by itself or in itself. This will be clearly prohibited and necessarily baseless. Five, he said, the thing is forbidden according to one side, but is commanded from another side. And this is divided into three situations. And he gave us examples. Excuse me to drink water. Over this, we have, we have given, you know, gone over it. Okay, so prohibited because of temporary quality, uh, prohibited because of an inherent quality and prohibited because of some internal reason. And why he gives those explanation uh, to realize and to recognize why things are prohibited and when it is prohibited, okay? I will uh, go over the next one, Sheikh, where we stop. Yes, Al-Am. Al-Am. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Al-Am, general statements. Definition, linguistically, it means complete, general, comprehensive, and general, general generality. <clears throat> that is umum. A general comprehensive affair is one that comprehends and includes another generally. In its technical meaning, al-am, is the word that absorbs all that is suitable for it at one time and with one meaning without any limitation. The phrase at one time excludes the word a man in a positive statement. Although it comprises all that can be absorbed by the word, but it comes on the basis of a substitute, not one time. The phrase with one meaning excludes, excludes words that have more than one meaning. For example, the word ayn, it means eyes, also means menstrual period. This surely has two meanings, not one. The phrase without limitation excludes numbers like 10, 100. This is according to those who do not see that numbers are forms of umum, forms of generality, siyagal umum. There are several words indicating gener generality, and they are called siyagal umum, forms of gener generality. Number one, kullu. Each, every, for example, Allah says, Kullu nafsin the iqatul maut. He translate, every soul shall have a taste of death. He also said, Kullun amana billahi omala ikatihi. He translates, each one of them believes in Allah and his angels. The second form, jami' that means all. For example, all the kings fold came, the plural with the definitive, definite article, but within pinpointing it, for example, Qad aflahal mu'minun, it translates, successful indeed are the believers. And similarly, the definite with idafa. For example, Allah says, Yusikum Allahu fi awladikum, it translates, 
Allah directs you as regards your children. The third form, the singular with the definite article without pinpointing it. For example, wal asr in al insana lafi khusr. It translates by the time. Verily, man is in loss, except such as have faith. Similarly, the singular, which is definite by the genitive construction, for example, Allah says, وَآتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوهُ وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْسُوهَا إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَظُلُمٌ كَفَّارٌ he translate, but if you count the favors of Allah, never will you be able to number them. Fourth form, the dual with the definite article. For example, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِذَلْ تَقَلْ مُسْلِمَانِ بِسَيْفَيْهِمَا فَالْقَاتِلُ وَالْمَقْتُولُ فِي النَّارِ He translate, if two Muslims reach up, uh, face up, with their swords, this is general for all Muslims. Fifth form, whatever. And this is used for anything other than human beings. As a relative pronoun, for example, Allah says, Ma indakum yenfadu wa ma indallahi baq. It translates, what is with you must vanish, and what is with Allah will endure. Conditional pronoun, for example, Allah says, وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمْهُ اللَّهِ He translates, and whatever good you do, be sure Allah knows it. The sixth form, whoever. This is used for human beings. As a relative pronoun, for example, وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا لِمَنْ تَبِعَ دِينَكُمْ He translates, and believe no one, unless he who follows your religion. As a conditional pronoun, for example, فَمَنْ يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَى It translates, then whoever has done an atom of weight of good shall see it. Seventh form, whenever. This is used for an unknown time as a condition. For example, whenever you visit me, I will be generous to you. Eighth form, wherever, for an unknown place, for example, Allah says, Ainama takunu yudirikumul mouth. It translates, wherever you are, death, death, wherever you are, death will find you out. The ninth form, the indefinite in a negative statement can either be nas, exact meaning of a word in general sense, or it could be bahir, obvious, in the general sense. I continue, Sheikh, or? Yes, no problem. Continue. But here uh, he said the infinite in a negative statement can either be nas. Nas. Ah, nas. Nas. Ah, yes. nas. 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 Okay, yes. nas. Yes. Okay. Go ahead. The def indefinite in a negative statement is a clear-cut meaning in the general sense in the following cases. One, if it is indeclinable with the word la, that means no. For example, there is no God except Allah. Second, if the word min is additional in any of the three following cases, A, before the subject of a verb, for example, لِتُنذِرَ قَوْمًا مَا أَتَاهُمْ مِن نَذِيرٍ مِّن قَبْلِكَ he translate to give warning to a people to whom no warner had come before thee. B, before the object of a verb. For example, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ He translate, not a message did we send before thee. C, before the subject of a nominal sentence. For example, وَمَا مِنْ إِلَهٍ إِلَّا إِلَهٌ وَاحِدٍ they translate, for there is no God except one God. The indefinite closely connected to a negative. For example, the word a single one. As Allah relates to us what Prophet Nuh said. وَقَالَ نُوهُ الرَّبِّ لَا تَذَرْ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ مِنَ الْكَافِرِينَ دَيَّارًا He translate, 
O my Lord, leave not of the unbelievers a single one on earth. A statement can be obvious in the general sense, not clear cut other than the above mentioned. For example, a negative preceded by La that does the work of laser. Example, there is not a man in the house. You will explain now, Sheikh. Okay, inshallah. Uh, Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa rasulillah. Here, Al-Am, first of all, he intends to mention the uh, word when it comes so general. Al-Am, wal-umum. So, Al-Am, the, the, the word or the nas, nas means the context of Sharia or the text from Sharia. Okay. It connotes you know, that it is a general sense. Like, for example, what Allah SWT says, Ya Yuhalladina Amanu. It includes everyone, you know, addressed as a believer, okay? All Muslims. It doesn't, for example, address, you know, those uh, who are, you know, Arabs or those who are, for example, uh, you know, uh, Muslims in Medina, the Sahaba only. No, it, it addresses all. So he said here, linguistically, in language, it means, you know, am means complete or general in a sense or comprehensive. And generality and umum, umum here with, N, with M, not with N, okay? So umum is with M at the end. Means encompassing or comprehensive affair. Uh, he said it is one that includes or encompasses or comprehends uh, you know, others generally, in a general sense. So, for example, if you say a nas, you don't mean someone, you know, in itself, al insan. You don't mean a specific person. All humans, males and females, are included, and the nas is the same. So in technical, uh, in its technical meaning, Al-Am is the word that uh, he said absorbs all that's suitable for it at one time. And what it includes all things that suitable in it at one time and with uh, one, as he said here, with one without any limitation, okay? He said, with what uh, I can't see exactly what he said here. Yes, sure. With one meaning, yes, without an imitation. As we said, the nas means all. The phrase at one time excludes the word a man in a positive uh, statement. Okay. And for example, what does he mean? Uh, so, uh, and if you if you meant a rajul and you are talking about a specific person <laughs> or pointing to a person, then this is not am, okay? But if you say a rajul, you know, uh, is different than woman. So you are not talking about specific, uh, you know, man, okay? This is what he meant. Instead also it comprises all, uh, you know, it comprises, all that can be and included in that word, but it comes on the basis of substitute, okay? Uh, substitute, oh, sorry for that. Substitute meaning without any limitation. So the phrase at one time, uh, he said, uh, exclude the word a man in a positive statement. Oh, sorry, I, I got again to the same thing. Yes. But he said here, the phrase at one time includes the word a man in a positive statement means if you've been born to some person. Also, it comprises all that can be absorbed by the word, but it comes on the basis of that substitute, not one time. Anyway, he here, it comprises all that can be inside that, okay? 
uh, he said the friends one meaning okay exclude uh, yani why he meant by this the, the meaning here a, gen, a general comprehensive affair is one that comprehends another generally okay so and he said the technical meaning is the word that absorbs and includes all that's you know fitting to that word that meaning uh, at, at one time okay why is it at one time because at other times maybe uh, the, I mean, for, as i said a rajul could mean a general sense could mean am and it could mean khas in another time okay and uh, with one meaning without any limitation so it's not limited by something so if i said at al rijal kulluhum illa amr so i'm saying that you know i'm specifying certain group okay al rijal doesn't mean the whole you know men and the, the whole world okay so this is what uh, any a person needs to know the context in order to specify what does mean by that am uh, he gave an example here he said ain does it mean the eyes or it means for example something else like the an ain al ma the spring of water okay so it depends on the context and uh, it depends on what i'm talking about the qur menstrual period or uh, purity al qur okay uh, and here uh, actually he should have mentioned al qur you know because al qur could mean purity and could mean menstrual period and uh, this differs you know when you one says it it depends on the context so he said this is surely has uh, two meaning not one like ain and like al al qur but al you know al qur i guess maybe there is uh, you know there is a missing words here because al qur means purity also it means menstrual period so it has two meanings not one he said the phrase without limitation excludes numbers like uh, you know 100 so if you hundred say 100 men so it's not general to to include more than the 100 okay like right. this is according to those who do not see that numbers are forms of amu now he is going to say the forms when we need what are the forms that would come in ayat or in the texts of quran and sunnah and we should learn from it that it is am not khas and he mentioned kull kull nafsin zaqat al mawt every soul shall have a taste of death so it's known kull her general it there is nothing exempted okay from the creation kull an nas yaghdu in the hadith of the prophet sallallahu all of the people you know they go uh, in the morning you know for their or they wake up and they go for their own earnings or you know fabay an nafsa wa ma'tukaha aw mubiqaha kullu an-nas so all of the people so, so it doesn't exempt anybody any human being uh كل كل امن بالله وملائكته so this كل here is actually <coughs> more of mean uh, more to mean believers because before that it was mentioned you know amana rasulu bima unzila ilayhi ya rabbihi wal mu'minun كل امن so it means the prophet and the believers uh, جميع if it comes you know uh, Uh, in the in the ayat or in the hadith you know jamia it means the whole okay yani when the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in the hadith wa idha salla qa'idan fasallu qu'udan ajma'un okay 
يعني or جميعا in, in some حديث. So we have to realize that you know جميع or جمع or uh, اجمعون. Okay, it means the whole and it is you know one of the uh, forms of uh, you know general generalities that it doesn't uh, you know there is no exception. Now we come to the uh, when the word has you know the 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 article al al mu'minun qad aflah al mu'minun. If there is a missing something here for jami'an for examples, the the al mean you know could mean like in al mu'minun. It means the generalities. It doesn't exclude any. So successful indeed are the believers. You know, the believers means the Muslims, you know, those who believed in Allah and in the messenger. Uh, if you would uh, mean a group of believers, you could, it could be not in generality. Huh? If you say al-mu'minuna fi Mecca, al-mu'minuna fi, you specify more, it's more, it's more of a sense not that general line. Uh, he said, uh, and so similar to that, okay, is the idafa, the genitive construction. And idafa in Arabic, like the word, yusikum Allah fi awladikum. Okay, awlad dikum. So Allah directs you as regards to your, your children. So this is, it's in, uh, it means all of your progeny, okay? There is no specific, uh, specific, you know, of them. So the males, the females, sons, daughters, okay? And it could include even more than that. You know, the, whether they are from the same mother or from different mothers, okay? <laughs> Uh, he said uh, here the singular with the definite article al again without pinpointing it so you are not specifying a special like wal asr so wal asr by the time the time it, you didn't specify any special time okay uh, or al insan like in al insan al fi khusr all of the uh, humanity, you know, it doesn't specify, you know, specific humans. Uh, this is general uh, or am. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, by the time, wal asr, uh, this is with the opinion of mean, the meaning of al asr is the time. And some of them, they said al asr means salat al asr. Then it becomes more specific. Verily, man, or men in general, human humans, is in loss, except, you know, for the believers. Similarly, singular, which is definite by the genitive construction. For example, Allah says, وَأَتَاكُمْ مِنْ كُلِّ مَا سَأَلْتُمُوا وَإِنْ تُعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ نعمت الله. So the, but if you cannot count the favors of Allah. So نعمت الله here, it is a general, the favors of Allah is a general. There is nothing, you know, specific, okay? Uh, you cannot, you never, and you will be not be able to number them or count them. Uh, he said the dual was a definite article. And the dual and musanna in Arabic, if it is, uh, with the definite article al, it means general. So إذا التقى المسلمان بسيفيهما. المسلمان here doesn't mean uh, only uh, specific, it is general. So it doesn't mean specific Muslim, okay, or specific to, but it is general in a sense. Excuse me. Okay. 
can you go uh, over uh, reading afterwards so that we can? Yes, sir. Yes, read whatever. Yeah, okay. the implication, uh, where, where I left, left. Yes. the page number 113, second paragraph. Yes. The implications oh. and usage of a general term. The gen a general statement in origin refers to everything. In other words, the law that it has is the same for every individual that falls under it. This is the case if there is no limitation, and it is a general word that remains in its generality. These are very few. Some examples are as follows. Number one. Allah's statement in the Quran, Oma min da batin fil arli illa ala Allahi rizquha. It translates, There is no moving creature on earth, but its sustenance depends on Allah. Wallahu bi kulli shayin alim. It translates, Allah is well acquainted with all things. Hurrimat alaykum ummahatukum. He translates, prohibited to you for marriage are your mothers. Or sometimes a general word is used, but it means one person. And this is the general statement when it is used with a specific meaning. For example, Allah says in the Quran, He translates, those to whom people said, and the meaning of people is Nu'aym ibn Mas'ud, or other than him. Also, Am yahsudun an nasa ala ma atahumullahu min fadli. He translates, or do they envy mankind for what Allah has given them of his bounty? The word man mankind in this verse refers to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A general statement is mentioned, then a limitation is introduced, and this is called am maqshus, or a limited gen generality. For example, Allah says, It translates, divorced women shall wait concerning themselves for three monthly periods. The word divorced women is general, but it is limited by Surah 65, verse number 4, where Allah says, For those who carry life within their wombs, their period is until they deliver their burdens. Their waiting period, even if they are divorced, is giving birth and not three monthly periods. The generality of special laws addressed to the Prophet ﷺ. The specific address to the Prophet ﷺ includes the entire Ummah, except if there is a proof to show that it is only meant for him alone. For example, the generality of special laws addressed to the Prophet ﷺ, the specific address to the Prophet ﷺ includes the entire Ummah, except if there is a proof to show that it is only meant for him alone. For example, Allah says, It translates, Then when Zaid had dissolved his marriage with her, with the necessary formality. We joined her in marriage to thee in order that there may be no difficulty to the believers in the matter of marriage with the wives of their adopted sons. When the latter have dissolved with the necessary formality their marriage with them. Also Allah's statement for one who has given himself in marriage to the Prophet it translates. Yes. Huh? yes. Sorry. Uh, huh? Also, Allah's statement for one who has given herself. Huh? 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. For also okay. Allah's statement for one who has given herself in marriage to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, خالصت الله من دون المؤمنين. It translates, this is only for thee and not for the believers at large. If the address was specifically for the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and not the believers, then there was no need for an explanation in the first verse. Nor was there any a need for the specification in the second verse. You explain, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Right. The the point here is, uh, you know, again, Sayyid al Umum is more general. We you can refer to them, uh, inshallah, above. But here he wants to mention that sometimes uh, there is an address that could mean. And it could be like a general, um, but it is meant for as khas. Or there could be address, you know, uh, a context that address khas, but it means it meant am. And he gave an example like the uh, the example in this ayah. Or let's, uh, you know, he talked about examples, you know, for general for am. And he talked about the khas here. Sometimes a general word is used, but it means, you know, specific person. Like الذين قال لهم الناس إن الناس قد جمعوا لكم فخشوا. You know, and uh, the ulama said that this is a saying from, you know, Naim, okay, uh, Naim ibn Mas'ud, uh, or other. Than from Quraysh. Sorry. And those people, they uh, uh, they claimed, or they said, uh, they said to the Muslims, you know, uh, fear the people; they are uh, preparing for you and returning back. So Allah Subhanahu Taala made it. You know, uh, He said that it is. You know that that those to whom people said, "In the nas qajma alakum fakshoom," but this is you know as we said, uh, those to whom people said. So people here in gen general, but it meant specific people. Am yahsudun al nas ala ma atahum Allah min fadla? Or do they do they envy mankind for what Allah has given them of His bounty? Mankind here in this verse refers to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay, but the meaning is is uh, also uh, general and Allah knows best that so it was revealed in a specific, you know, specifically for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam or for the believers, but the meaning is more than that. Okay, the meaning is more than that. والمطلقات يتربصن بأنفسهن ثلاثة قروء. Divorced women shall wait concerning themselves for the monthly for three monthly period. So divorced women here is general, but it is limited by the other surah. يعني the whole divorced women, but we know that there is an exception of that, and the exception is the you know the women who are pregnant. Now, he said here, the the generality, okay, of special laws, and there are laws or hakam uh, rulings that was, uh, you know, directed uh, to the Prophet Sallallahu Would the Ummah be included in it? Yes, unless there is a specific thing to exempt or to make it special or peculiar to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Like this hukum in the Surah Al-Ahzab, where Allah SWT said uh, that فَلَمَّا قَضَى زَيْدٌ مِنْهَا وَطَرًا زَوَّجْنَا كَهَا لِكَيْ لَا يَكُونَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ حَرَجٌ فِي أَزْوَاجِ أَدْعِيَائِهِمْ إِذَا قَضَوْا مِنْهُنَّ وَطَرًا Okay, uh, so the, the address was to the Prophet Sallallahu However, the ruling is general to the whole Ummah and yani, it's actually included here. You know, when Allah SWT said, <laughs> You know, so uh, uh, in, in it, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "Likayla," so that 
it it won't be okay. Uh, it won't be difficult or make it difficult for the believers, okay, uh, in the, that matter of marriage with the wives of their adopted sons. Now, uh, if the later have divorced, dissolved uh, with the, and, and this is the meaning of qadha min hunna wataran, and qadha min hunna wataran, when, when they are satisfied with them, they don't want to live with them anymore, okay? Unless there is something in the, يعني Allah Subhanahu wa says, "Ya yuhan nabiyyu taqillah." Does this only specific to the Prophet Sallallahu No, it is general to the whole Ummah to fear Allah with regard to what Allah Subhanahu wa mentioned. Uh, he mentioned here, "Khalisa talaka min dunil mu'minin." When whenever there is a statement to be specific, not general, for the Prophet Sallallahu Allah will mention, you know, like this ayah. This is only for you and not for the believers. Uh, you know, and uh, this is if a woman would come and offer herself in marriage to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah has made it a special hukum ruling for his Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said if the dress was specifically for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and not the believers, then there was, if this was, uh, you know, there was no need for an explanation in the first verse, nor was there a need for the specification in the second verse, okay? So we will stop here, inshallah, and uh, the next week we'll uh, come to uh, know more about, you know, generality and what you can say specific, general and specific uh, context in the Sharia. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it of benefit. Uh, it might be a bit, uh, you know, involved, but uh, this is due to the fact that Arabic language is very vast and it's uh, so inclusive, so, you know, what you can say, comprehensive in its aspect. So if you have, inshallah, any question, we can address them. If you don't have any question, then uh, we'll stop here, inshallah. And the next week, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it. Uh, it's easy on to us to, you know, to learn more and to be, uh, you know, to remember what we have taken. If you have questions, you can ask inshallah. Yes, Sheikh. This falamma qala zaidun minha wataran. What is the meaning of wataran here, Sheikh? Okay. Uh, the the water here is the, uh, you know, uh, actually, it means the 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 need his need according to the ulama uh, who you know, I can even check it more in the tafsir for you now but uh, as I remember means he's, he was satisfied with, with what he had you know got of her marriage he, he doesn't like to continue that marriage anymore okay? uh -huh. so this is it yes but normally if the word come as a standalone just wataran what exactly the meaning of that one, Sheikh? Or is yes. it in, is ready uh, in the context? Yes, al-watar yani, al means in language, uh, as per the Arabic language, means the uh, need or the oh. uh, oh. the the desire. Okay, could could mean that. Okay. Ah, right. Okay. Yes. Amin. Amin. Any more questions, brothers? No, Sheikh. We ask Allah to make it this class of benefit to all of us and extend our life to do more uh, righteousness in this life, uh, you know, for our hereafter. And may Allah make it easy unto us to treat the path of righteousness. Allahumma alimna ma yinfa'una wa yinfa'na bi ma'alamtana wa zidna ilman ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma inna na'udhu bi rizaka min safhatik وبمعافاتك من عقوبتك وبك منك لا نحسن عليك أنت كما أذنيت على نفسك وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين وجزاكم الله خير ميلا ريوديو فور يور تن تن تبلسينج والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاكم الله خير شيخ آمين آمين وياكم برشامس السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته